going forward. Let's ask author, lecturer, and former independent candidate for Congress, Marianne Williamson, who joins us now from our Los Angeles studio. Marianne, welcome back. Oh, thank you so much, Tom, for having me. Great to have you with us. What's your take on Obama blaming Bush for the rise of ISIS? It seems pretty fair to me. Well, it, uh, it's a simply a matter of fact. If we had not invaded Iraq, this would not be happening. And that's just historical fact. What's interesting to me, Tom, is how sociopathic the whole thing is. Sociopaths show no remorse. This day, this anniversary, should be a day of national shame and horror and remorse and atonement. And we never go there. We take this attitude towards not only the greatest military misadventure in our history, but this horrible tragedy that just keeps on uh, multiplying in its consequences. And the national attitude is sort of, oops, don't complain, don't explain. So I, I'm as concerned about the lack of whole person response um, as I am about the fact that it ever even happened, because that's what keeps things like this happening. Right. If you never, if we had really taken in the shame and the horror of realizing what we had done in Vietnam, for instance, I think we would have been less likely to do this. And if we refuse to take the, the Iraq invasion, and if we refuse to take in the shame and the horror of what we did here, then that just keeps fueling that dissociation, that emotional and psychological dissociation from the consequences of our misdeeds, then only perpetuates the cycle by which it's inevitably going to occur again and which of course is continuing with the um, war machinery right now with yeah. ISIL and so forth. We never, you know, thinking of the Vietnam War, I think by the, by the time the Vietnam War was over everybody knew that we had been lied into the war. The Gulf of Tonkin resolution was a lie and yet yes. we as a nation never admitted that, never, never reconciled that, never apologized to anybody, never did anything. Um, are you suggesting that that made it easier for George W. Bush to lie us into a war and the fact that we haven't held him or Dick Cheney accountable means that the next guy who comes along and wants to lie us into a war will get away with it too? Well, I do think that there was more of an acknowledgement just among the population that we lost in Vietnam. Yeah. I, I do think that there was more of an acknowledgement of our utter failure there than we have allowed ourselves to go to uh, with the Iraq War. But I remember when uh, Robert McNamara said it was a terrible mistake. And something I said a lot at the time was that if we were an emotionally and psychologically healthy nation, when Robert McNamara said about the Vietnam War that it was a quote-unquote terrible mistake, this country would have shut down for three days and we would have just shouted into our pillows. Mm. You're right. There was no national ritual. There was no atonement. There was no mea culpa of any kind. We don't do that in this country. Other countries do, by the way. Mm. And absolutely, I think that's part of what allowed. You know, Pope John Paul, two popes ago, said that if you don't atone, if you don't apologize, if you, what he called a purification of memory, then you are not conscious of when you're doing the same thing again. And that's a national disease. That's a national pathology we have. We never fully allowed the mea culpa about slavery. And that is connected to the fact that we don't have a full consciousness about the legacies of slavery and so much of our social and political and economic policies. Mm. So absolutely, I'm saying it, including what you said before, which is that there's no justice. We, we you know, somebody, we have 500,000 nonviolent drug offenders in the prisons of the United States today. And yet we're not calling to account Dick Cheney and George Bush and others who absolutely knowingly lied to us. Or at the very least, it is a reasonable enough assumption that this should be looked into for serious prosecutorial possibility. Yeah, We're they, just not even going to go there. Yeah, they lied and people died. Um, in, the, in the two and a half or so minutes we have left, you're, you're putting on the Sister Giant 3 conference uh, the weekend after this coming weekend. I will be there. I'm flying out Saturday morning. I'll be there uh, Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening. And I'm very much looking forward to it. This is uh, in Los Angeles and by live stream. At SisterGiant.org is the website. Tell us about it, Marianne. Well, I'm very excited that you're going to be there. People can find out more at SisterGiant.com. You will be there along with Senator, uh, along with uh, Senator Bernie Sanders and Dennis Kucinich and Lisa Bloom and uh, Diane Randall from the uh, Friends National Committee on Legislation. We will be talking deeply about the history of corporatism, about the overthrow, the overthrow, overturning of Citizens United, establishing public funding. Uh, looking into the corruption of our food supply, what the chemical companies and the big agricultural companies have done, regenerative agriculture, um, mass incarceration, uh, economic inequality. I thought it was a fascinating conversation you were having with Richard Escow uh, just a few minutes ago. How do we, we need to, 
repudiate, you know, what's happening with the, with the mainstream corporate media is that they're not talking about these things that are most important. And Sister Giant is a kind of incubator for more passionate activism, including more passionate um, candidacies based on these ideas. So I, I think it's a, a great conference. I'm so excited that you're coming. I can't thank you enough. And people can be there in Los Angeles with us. It's March 28th and 29th, or also live stream. And I think it's going to be uh, it's going to be fantastic. Yep, a large part because you're going to be there. So I, I, I'm very much looking forward to it. Marianne Williamson, Thank SisterGiant.com is the website. Marianne Williamson, great to see you. I look forward to seeing you the weekend after this. Thanks, Marianne.